I want to take a moment to show you the chipping I'm doing on the Crusaders. It's very different from what I've done on the Grants. It's a lot heavier and I've also, I'm going to be doing it in reverse and as much as I'm putting on the dark areas first and then giving them light accents in very selected places. Um, very thin lines are required for this, so it's to get an overall worn uh, look particularly around the edges but also to break up some panel, draw lines, scratches across areas of modulation to help draw things together. So I'll just quickly do a bit just so you can see what I've got in mind. Now in this turret, see if I can zoom in just a touch on that you need to make these lines nice and small you don't want you don't want to be putting big thick lines on and as before when I've been doing the scratching I'm bouncing the the edge of the brush along lines and panel edges and see what's happening here is there's some very light lines on the turret which can just disappear into the lighter background so the darker colour helps just bring it out a little and on the front here what I can do is as well as just scratching along the front of the panel I can add in some larger areas which I can then accent with a bit of the highlight colour to help them pop and catch the eye and that will help creating the shape and then we've got large panels here which could do with a bit scratching just a tiny bit and some little dots just to break them up. I'm not going to be scratching on top of these static elements you know, sticking up all over the place. I would probably do that on a darker tank with a lighter scratch but I'm not going to do it on a light tank with a darker scratch. It'll probably just confuse what's happening. So I'm going to do this all over the turret then all over the hull paying particular attention to the, the storage bins on the hull and then they're ready for the next step. Going to paint some rusty exhausts now. I like painting uh, a rusty appearance directly onto the exhausts. You can just put like a, a wash over it, over um, a colour, a base colour, or perhaps a, a base colour that's been distressed a little, but I enjoy painting uh, the rust elements. Now I'm going to be using Panzer Ace's Dark Rust, which I have already put on as the first coat. Then you've got Light Rust from Panzer Ace's. And Yellowish Rust, which is the final colour to go on, but you've got to really control how much you're putting on. So, let's put the Light Rust colour on. Now the trick here is not to be too symmetrical. So I'm going to be stabbing away and then drawing lines. I want to try to maintain the shape 
without outlining it too strongly. Same over on this side. I'm leaving the area in between these mufflers just a dark base colour. And then on the rear deck. Stabbing along that pipe. Just trying to keep a random appearance and random movements with a brush. So, having applied that, we can then go to the yellowish rust, which we need to be very careful with, because this is a very bright colour. So, just want to create some contrast between the dark and the light area for the strongest result but it's really really small amounts that I'm putting on here little dots, little lines And that's it. It's a nice splash of colour on the rear of the vehicle. Helps, I feel these little splashes of colour help bring things into focus as well. So I'll go and do the other two tanks in the platoon. I'm going to apply some small enamel streaks, enamel paint streaks, to the panels. And that'll just add a nice weathered look and it'll soften and break things up. Just enough, not too much. Oops, I'll try and stay in shot. Now, I'm using my enamel paint for streaking and I find an older pot's better than a new pot because what I'm interested in is the gunk that you find in the neck. So, I'll take some of that. And my brush has got a little bit of thinner on it, just so it's damp. I'm going to draw some lines. Don't want to go crazy and do too much here. It's brown streaking, but I'm still going to put some over the brown camo. So I haven't put them on. I'm going to clean the brush, take most of the thinner off, and then I'm going to soften and shape the lines. You can draw the line up or down depending on whether or not you want to make it shorter or longer. Drawing it up the way will make it shorter.
and as the lines a bit squint you can also that's a bit too much thinner you can also straighten the line out now I took too much off there because it's too much thinner so I've just loaded the brush again I'm going in whoops and got a nice straight line now that's going to be enough doesn't look like much but I should tell you what I'll do a little tiny bit in here Tiny bit thinner. And of course, let's not forget the back as well. Could have one drawn off there, drawn off there. Now, I could put one over here as well, but it'll probably look too symmetrical. So, I'll draw it off from under the grill. Those lines are quite soft already. But I'll just taper them down a bit. And that is enough. It's added a weathering feature to the hull and the turret without dominating too strongly. Whoops, there we go. And I've done the same with the other uh, tanks and with the guns as well. Right, it's time to move on to the crew. That's the gun crew and the tank crew. I'm painting them in the same fashion. I start with a base coat, which is my shade coat of German Camel Black Brown and then in most cases I use two coats after that, a main coat and a highlight but because this is such a light colour I quite often use an additional coat. In this case I've decided to use three coats. If you're going to use a light colour you typically have to give it two coats anyway so you might as well take advantage of that and use an extra shade coat. So. I shade, um, well I give it a second shade rather, of US Field Drab and in the main colour is Panzer Aces Old Wood and then a highlight of Iraqi Sand. This one I've painted everything except the tunic so I'm going to let you see that start to finish to give an idea of how I achieve the sort of the high contrast uh, look with the, uh, the highlight and the shading to bring out the shape of, this, of the small figure. Right, so we'll start with this second shade colour. position it so you can see what I'm doing. So this is as I mentioned in many respects just another undercoat for the main colour so I'm going to apply it more or less in the same way as I would the main colour. Now you can see I'm just picking out features, blocking things in, picking out folds in the uniform, leaving enough shade to give it some shape but not so much that the shade dominates and you don't want it looking too streaky. Now 
and then same on this arm, picking out the rolled up sleeve and always remember to go over a feature and then in here as well there'll be a collar. If you don't work all the way around the features you'll leave too much shade the figure will just look too dark so I'm going to quickly move on I shall do the shots later I'll show you the next shade as you can see it's quite a quick process as well you don't have to spend a lot of time waiting for things to dry so I'm more or less going to complete the same brush strokes again I shall look to leave some of that second shade coat in place otherwise I'm more or less just painting over the top of it front this is where I want to make sure I capture the detail of those pockets oops not even in camera I'll try that again and that is the the bulk of the paint that's going to be applied but there's one very very important stage that will make all the dif difference to the contrast and that's the highlight and for this I use a very small brush now I need to be applying the paint quite thin so it flows off the, the brush in a nice even way I need to be putting, putting this highlight on as close as possible to the areas of darkest shade that way you create the greatest possible degree of contrast so to, up to a point you'll follow the, the folds of the cloth but not necessarily on every brush stroke just a bit of highlight along the top of the pockets and then vertical lines there to form the shape a little bit underneath a bit more over the, the top of that sleeve And there you go. I'll now do the shorts and you'll be finished. Now I'd like to add a little bit more storage to these tanks in the form of satchels. They've got to one degree or another some tarpaulins on them but I think that classic look is uh, satchels hanging off these uh, side screens and I'm, what I'm going to do is make something along the lines you can see on the back of this turret using green stuff and I do it in a couple of stages the first stage is creating the initial shape letting it dry and then finishing it off now I'm just rolling some of this out most of the work I'm going to do will be on the vehicle itself just want to cut some basic shapes so I'll transfer this to one of the Crusaders I 
have it hanging beside the tarpaulin. Have a, a bit, of, bit of a jaunty wee angle there, not just nice and neat. Now I want to give it a little bit of shape, so I'm just going to create a seam basically. Now that's all I need to do at this stage. Bring that up a bit more towards the camera. It's really simple. And I just need to repeat that with various size satchels, just making them in the right kind of scale. Don't make them too big. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll repeat that along the sides of the vehicles, leave them dry, and then I'll show you the next stage. So the green stuff has set up overnight and what I'll be doing now is adding all the features that are really going to make these things look like satchels and bags and, and uh, storage. Uh, I'll be adding a flap to the top of the bag, a little tie down a strap of some kind and then a strap of some kind or other to effect to the look as though it's attached to the side of the hull. So I've rolled out some green stuff. I'm going to cut a piece to the kind of length that I'm needing. And then, oops, excuse me, I'm going to attach it to the piece of green stuff. Then we put on the last time and then I'm going to be pushing this top in so that it ties in with the, the, the piece on the bottom. Now this is a little bit alongside So I can just cut that. To the length that I need. Oops, still stuck. Right, then I can push that down a bit. Or a bit more in the middle. And little scraps of green stuff, little off cuts come in handy for the next stage. I want to put a little, just a little strap for a buckle. Just have to get that initial piece in place. That was a bit, a bit too small. Just roll up another piece. Cut it to length and just take a minute to get the shape that he needs so it stands out prominently. Lift the sides a bit. And then I need a strap, so I'm going to just cut a thin piece off. Just 
can roll it to keep it e more easily managed. I need to attach one end. Just give me just one moment. This is always tricky when it comes to green stuff. So I've tucked it in to that corner. I'm going to push it home. And then I've got to imagine the point. This is tied down, I think. There. Looks about right. So I'm going to cut the strap to length and then I'm going to shape it. Try and get the, the correct sort of appearance that gravity would have. It wouldn't be a, a nice neat curve. And that'll probably do it. So there you can see it's a quite a quick process. It's got to be repeated quite a lot because I've got quite a lot of um, bags and storage on these now but uh, it'll help add some character and a little bit of colour as well on the side. Um, and you'll, you'll notice I've also dusted the side off the, uh, the, the, the sand scuffs. I've done that on all the tanks on this box set. Uh, I think it's, it gives it a nice a nice touch that you would probably expect to see that works really well too on the colours that I've used uh, on the, the Monty's Desert Wrap box. So I'll keep battering on with the green stuff and before you know it they'll all be in place ready for painting from tomorrow. So here we have the completed box set. Three quite different looking units. And that's uh, down to the different approaches and the, quite clearly the different colours that I've used. Let's have a look at the, each one in turn. So the 17 pounders look really quite nice. On the sprue they don't look as though they're up to much when you compare the components to the 88s. I get them based, finished and based and they look like quite serious anti-tank guns. And I think they quite fit the bill. Let's have a closer look. So you can see the weathering and the, the chipping that's been carried out. That's a bit of character to the complete piece. And the crew with the lumber and they're going to go together quite nicely to create a nice, um, a nice sense of action. Now, the bases, incidentally, I I made them using. It's I don't think it's uh, Vallejo clear gel, and. Uh, I spread that all over the base and then I dipped them into Army Painter Snow, which is a, a very granular uh, kind of snow. Lots and lots of little round uh, pellets. And it works really well. Painted it with a dark sand and washed them with the sand wash that I'd used on the lower hulls of the tanks. And then just got a few things, a bit of fluff and a few rocks just to break up the monotony and I think you'll also find that if you leave little ridges in the the gel, let the sand, well let the the snow just sit on that, don't smooth it out, it'll give you uh, the impression of windblown sand. So really pleased with how they look. Now here's the Crusaders. Now, as we discussed before, the surfaces of these are really quite busy with lots of scratches and streaking, but in the main, they look fine from your typical viewing distance. But you can see there, 
the modulation, the weathering, the dusting, just helping to create that battle-worn look. And of course some tank commanders. This guy doesn't look too happy. You've probably seen an 88 in the horizon. And there's the storage made out of green stuff. That's a nice little battle-worn unit though I think they would have to form the basis of a unit because they've all got six pounders on these variants. So it's probably looking for some two pounders to flesh them out to fill units. So the grants, excuse me one second. Now you can see the various degrees of modulation across them, the dusting on the tracks, slight streakiness to the hull, dusting on the side scars. And a bit of scratching and battle damage. And they've turned out really quite nice. Much darker than the Crusaders. But I'm more than happy with that. As it sets them apart as a different unit. And there's more storage being sculpted and put on them. Plus some determined looking or relaxed looking tank commanders. Just pan over to the last one. So that's most likely to be in its current shape, a HQ section of uh, two and a platoon of three. But I do like the, the Grant. It's a crazy tank. But it is one of my favourite crazy tanks. I'll bring one over for a closer look. Just so you can see all around. modulation on the top and the sides of the turret, top of the sponson, and some battle damage, some streakiness, all these fun things to paint. So there you go. One of these desert rats getting ready for battle. Hopefully these uh, clips have helped you consider how you're going to approach painting them yourself. There's a lot of techniques that I've used that are very time consuming as I've said so you may or may not want to follow them but the end result is very pleasing, very bright. Doesn't suffer from being uh, dulled down with heavy washes or brightened up too much with um, very bright lines from dry brushing. There you go, the finished box set.